Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE. This is probably my new favorite switch for in-home use. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have an Amazon store and I'll put the link in the description below. So the Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE is the new equivalent to the Unify Switch 8 60 watt, but it, it has a newer modern design. If we look at the Unify Switch 8 60 watt, it has the all steel case and it looks a little outdated. I really like the new modern white look of these switches and the mounting brackets that it comes with makes it very easy if you're mounting it to a wall. The first thing we'll do, we'll get this unboxed, then we'll go through some of the specs and get it adopted into our Unify controller. The Unify Switch Lite PoE comes in the typical brown box that they're now sending out with their gear. On the back, we have the pull tab to open the box. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull that open. On the top panel, we have some instructions on how to power it up as well as mounting and a QR code to get the app or get answers. Ubiquiti always does a great job at packaging their stuff so that it doesn't get damaged in transport. You can see there's quite a bit of styrofoam around the switch and we'll pull it out. And here we have our switch. So the first four ports are PoE plus. They have a little lightning bolt showing which ports are PoE and the ports five to eight are non-PoE. It shows you the status light indicators for the different speeds. If we're on amber, we're doing 10 by 100. And if it's green, it's one gigabit. On the bottom, we can see the groove for where we're gonna be putting our mounting bracket. And if you just wanna have this on your desk, it does come with rubber pads. And on the back, we have our power input. Next up, we have our Unify power supply. So it's a fairly long cord. I would think about six or seven feet. It comes with two anchors and two screws if we're gonna be mounting this to our wall. And then it comes with our mounting bracket, which is very easy to put on. I have the US 16 light PoE, and these things are simple to put onto your wall and to take off the wall if you need. So to mount it, all you would do is put a couple screws through the bottom of this mount, and then you would place the switch on top and then place it into the grooves and then push over, and then it would be mounted secure onto your wall. Now let's go over to the computer and go over some of the specs. All right, let's look at some of the specs of the Unify Switch Lite 8 PoE. This is a fully managed layer two switch with eight gigabit ports, and four of those ports are PoE+. The total wattage that we could use on the PoE ports all together would be 52 watts, and these are auto-sensing 802.3 AT. The total non-blocking line rate for the switch is eight gigabits per second. The network interfaces could do 10, 100, or one gigabit per second and the operating temperature is from minus 15 to 40 degrees Celsius. The price of the switch is $109 USD MSRP, and there's not much else to the switch. So let's go ahead, get into the controller and get it adopted. Now we're into my Unify controller and we can see that the Switch Lite 8 PoE is ready to be adopted and we'll click on the switch and then we'll press adopt. The switch is now adopted into our controller and we can see that we have a firmware update. So it wants to update from 5.6.0.11 to 5.43.23, and we'll press confirm. Now the switch has finished the firmware update, let's take a look at some of the settings. And most of the Unify switches have the same settings, but I'll go over it again, just in case this is your first time seeing it. So if we look under the details, we could see the MAC address, we could see the model, we could see the version of firmware that we're running, which has just been updated to 5.43. We could see our IP address, it shows temperature, but there is no sensor in the switch, so it won't show us the temperature. We can see the uptime, the memory usage, and the load average. If we click on our uplink, we'll see that we're uplinking to the USW Lite 16 PoE on port seven. And then it will show us our speed and our duplex. Currently we have no downlink, so it's not gonna show anything on this list. And we're uplinking on port eight, just because I didn't wanna use one of the PoE ports to do the uplink. If we look under clients, there is nothing in the client list as we only have the one uplink port plugged in. And now if we click on ports, we could see that the first four ports are PoE plus and the last four ports do not have any PoE at all. If we click on the edit pencil on one of the ports, we could switch the switch port profile, which will put this into a different VLAN. And we could also give the port a name. So if we had a access point in our living room, we could call it living room AP, and then we'd know exactly which port it's plugged into. 
We could do a Mac allow list. So whatever Mac address you put in here, that device would be allowed on this port. If somebody plugged in a different computer or an access point with a different Mac address that wasn't on this allow list, it would block the port. If we click on profile overrides, we could turn the PoE plus off or we could leave it on, which it's on by default. We could change the operation. So by default, it's in switching. We could change it to mirroring or aggregate and we could aggregate up to four ports. We could also change the link speed. Right now it's on auto negotiate, but we could change it to one gigabit full duplex, 100 megabits per second full duplex or half duplex, as well as 10 megabits per second full duplex or half duplex. Under settings, we could give the switch an alias if we choose. And then for the LED, we could use the site settings. We could turn the LED on or we could turn the LED off. Services is where we could specify what we want to use as the management VLAN. We could enable jumble frames as well as flow control. We could also choose which type of spanning tree we want to use if we want to use rapid spanning tree or just normal spanning tree, or we could disable it altogether. We could also choose the priority for the switch for the spanning tree protocol. And we could turn on 802.1x control. Under network, this is where we would specify if we want this switch to get an IP from DHCP or if we want to statically assign. Under manage device, this is where we would copy configuration, do a custom firmware upgrade. We could do a force provision on it, or we could forget this device from our controller. Under tools, we have a debug terminal. So if we open the terminal, it would bring us to a command line interface. And now we could use the CLI. And then under stats, we could see the CPU and memory utilization. So that's it for the switch settings and adopting it into our network. Why I love this switch is because it's great for home users or small businesses that only need a few PoE ports. A lot of small businesses are transitioning over to just wireless. So this switch would allow them to add up to four wireless access points on the PoE ports. It also comes in at a great price point at $109 USD MSRP. Another great thing about this switch is the mounting kit it comes with. It's very easy to use and install. If you guys have any questions about this switch, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.